It may not be the sexiest of Windows 10 topics, but it is by far the most critical in my mind. It's how to work with files and folders in Windows 10. Get logged into the John S. user account in your hands-on lab, and let me show you what I mean. The first thing that I see all the time is users are downloading stuff from the internet. Absolutely, they're downloading pictures, videos, applications, who knows what. And all of that goes where? It goes by default to their downloads folder, and then they start living and breathing out of the downloads folder. They have hundreds of files in here that they need, and they just keep them in the downloads folder, and they're mixed with plenty of files that they don't need. Something else that starts happening is an absolute mess with the documents folder. Why is this so? Well, let's go down to Cortana, and let's do a search on WordPad. We know that's running in our Windows 10 environment. Let's fire that up, and let's create a document. Just put some text in that document for me, and then do a file save. Where are things going to be saved by default? Sure enough, in the documents folder. Let's call this a Word doc. All right, great. So we'll save this into our documents folder. And that's all fine and good, of course, but what happens when we have hundreds of documents in there? Same thing starts happening as with the downloads folder. Many of the documents we don't even want in there anymore. We want to become proficient at file and folder management, and let's get started with that. In the documents folder, for instance, wouldn't it make sense to right-click an empty space in there and say new folder, and then create a folder that says like, Word docs. So now we have this Word docs folder that would be perfect for all the various Word docs. And in fact, if we double click that folder to go inside it, we might want to create a subfolder in there. And maybe that subfolder is like project one, <laughs> you know, the name of some project. Now, notice what's happening here in the file explorer. We get a path that we're in, and that's so valuable. We're in this PC documents, and we're in the Word docs folder, and this new folder is called Project 1. And you can click in this area, by the way, to move there. So now what's going on? Well, in our documents folder, we have the Word docs and that Word doc that we created. That needs to go, let's say, in the Project 1 folder. So how would we do that? Well, the easiest way I've found for moving and copying things is to right-click that object that you want to move or copy and then choose either cut or copy. A cut is going to remove it from this area and allow us to paste it in a different area where a copy is going to leave a copy here and allow us to paste it in a different area. So what do we want to do? We want to cut this Word doc from this location. And notice it kind of grayed out. It almost went transparent. Windows is telling us that that is on what's called the Windows clipboard right now in order to be pasted somewhere else. So let's go into Word docs and then let's double click into the project one folder and let's right click and let's paste that object into the project one folder where it belongs. So that's an example of making a move with the cut and paste behavior. Now let's try something a little different. Let's go to the documents folder by clicking on it and let's create a new folder and this new folder will be called copies. We occasionally want to copy stuff to this copy folder that we're working on. Let's go back into Word docs, double click project one to go into project one and let's click this Word doc and we're going to choose copy and now we're going to go back to documents. We're going to double click to go into the copies folder and we're going to paste. Now, it's a really good idea to rename this file at this point because you might get confused if they have the same name. And remember, they're not the same file. So if we go into this copy of Word doc and make changes, it won't be represented in the original Word doc. So here's an easy way to rename things. We click on it once to select it and then click on the name a second time in order to rename it. So that's click once and then wait some time and then click again. If you click too fast, it'll think you're trying to do a double click. So I'll name this word doc hyphen copy, for instance. And now we know this is a copy of that word document we were originally working on. So here we're using a cut to make a move or a copy to make a copy approach. Could you do something fancy like click and drag? 
Of course you could. Let's try that. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to restore down this window and I'm going to right click my file explorer icon and I'll choose file explorer in order to open another copy. And let's go down to this PC and let's see this E backup drive right here. Let's go into that backup drive. Watch this. If we click and drag our Word doc copy over into that other backup drive, notice it's going to copy it to that drive. If you release it, it copies it there. But what I don't like about clicking and dragging when it comes to files is there's rules on whether it's going to copy or move by default. Watch this. If I go over here to our E drive and I create a new folder named test and I click our word doc copy and I drag it down into test, notice it's going to do a move to that folder. So interesting, when we were going from drive to drive, it defaulted to a copy. When we were going from one location to another on the same drive, it defaulted to a move. I love working with precision. I want to know what it's doing. So I right click it and choose cut and then I double click and then in test, I do a paste in order to make sure I cut it from one location and pasted it into the other. And if you love keyboard shortcuts, you can of course use keyboard shortcuts here. Watch this. I'm going to select word doc copy and on the keyboard, I'm going to do a control C. And then on the keyboard, I'm going to click blank space in here first. And then on the keyboard, I'll do a control V and it does a paste. And it can't have the same file in the same location with the same name. So it did word doc copy copy. <laughs> Love it. And those are some of the only keyboard shortcuts I memorized, by the way. And they work in just about every Windows application or operating system you could imagine. So it is control plus C for copy. It's control plus X for cut. And it's control plus V for paste. I don't, I'm not a big shortcut guy, but I'll tell you those I use all the time. Now those were keyboard shortcuts we just went over, but let's talk about shortcut shortcuts for a moment, shall we? All right, let's close up this extra window and let's arrange this file explorer window that we have so that we can see plenty of desktop around it. And let's go up to our documents folder by clicking on it there. And let's start thinking about how we could make these important word docs available easily from other locations. One of the things Microsoft did for us in the file explorer was they gave us this quick access area right here. So notice these different areas. There's quick access, OneDrive, this PC, network. If we expand quick access, we can see that there's these pinned little shortcuts, if you will, underneath quick access. Watch this. I can right click my Word docs and I can say, pinned quick access. Now the Word Docs folder is always going to be there under quick access for me. If I don't want it there anymore, you can right click it and unpin it from quick access. Notice Microsoft will keep an eye on where you go frequently and they'll put quick access links for you under there, but notice they won't be pinned. So once again, a great tip here. Let's go to something we want to access all the time, right click it and pin it to the quick access area. Notice something else that we could do to the Word Docs folder with the right click. We could right click it and make sure it's selected by the way and then right click it and we could say I want to pin it to start. Now down on our start menu we should have a shortcut for the Word Docs and there it is it just appeared the Word Docs folder and if you click on that it opens the Word Docs folder for you in the file explorer. That's great. What about the desktop? Well, one easy way to go is now that I've got it down on my start menu, an easy way to create a desktop shortcut would be to drag it and link it onto the desktop. So now we have a shortcut on the desktop for the Word Docs folder. And just like the start menu, when we choose it, and that would take a double click on the desktop, we open that on the desktop. That's so great. What's nice about the start menu is it just requires a single click in order to open the Word Docs folder that we have created a shortcut to.
Now, it's no surprise what can get super troublesome for learners here is they can say, well, I want the Project One folder of the word docs on my desktop, and they'll click it and they'll go to drag it. But what is this doing? Yikes. It would move that folder to the desktop, something I definitely don't want. So let's, again, remember to look for the little icon there to make sure we're always dealing with shortcuts when it comes to our Windows 10 desktop. So in this nugget, you and I saw that we can create folders inside of our file explorer and inside of those folders, we can create our files and then we can make them accessible via a wide variety of shortcuts. This is a key to making your Windows 10 work just the way you want it to. And incidentally, being able to quickly find something that you might need very quickly. I hope you found this nugget informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.